On the goals and targets too, I mean, Karen and I do a lot of work with couples in the couples mastermind and all of that. And I've loved hearing and watching this with um, you and Sandy too. You guys do, I mean, you don't just say this, like you live this out. And like you said, it's not the sexy thing, but it's these regular connections and getting together and getting really clear on what you want. Thank you for joining me on the Investing for Freedom podcast. Today's episode is going to be amazing just because today's guest is amazing. And I had the privilege of getting to meet Jared uh, last December. I knew of Jared. I've stalked Jared forever because anything that Jared does is full of energy, full of excitement. And I just learned so much, but spending a few days with this guy just kind of shifted my thinking around a lot of things. And I'm excited to really just kind of dig in and pick his brain around sales, living a bigger life. I mean, heck, even getting into real estate investing. I've learned so much. And Jared, I may or may not have told you this, but even just listening to the way that you think about things, I actually sent a message to my sales team based on a little um, video that you did and told them like, hey, print me out a spreadsheet. I need all of this. Because the one thing that I've realized is like, I'm, I'm a closer, but I'm not really good at like the process and the pipeline and following through. And I actually think that you know, that's an art that America in general, I think has lost and watching you, you're an expert at it. So I'm excited to have you here, man. Man, you just said a lot of really nice stuff, man. I appreciate it. I'm so, uh, so glad to be here with you. It was a great time getting to know you. And so I was really quick to say yes. Uh, when you asked me to be here. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, uh, I I'm just excited to dig into it. So I have a few questions that I ask every guest. I may not, I've got a million questions for you, so I might not get to all of them, but Here's the first one. If you could narrow it down to one thing that has had the greatest impact on your success, what would that be? Oh, man, one thing. I mean, I, I, I think that having really clear goals and targets uh, is, is always going to be the thing that drives you to do more. You know, like I know it's kind of like a, it's probably not the sexiest uh, uh, answer, but, you know, when you have big goals and, you learn how to actually think bigger than you're thinking, which goes into a whole nother set of like things that are uh, uh, supportive of, of growth. Um, the people you're around, the act, you know, the actions that you have, the discipline, all those other things. Um, but like when you really take a step back and you go like, where do I want to be in the future? Um, you know, growing up, I, I always tell people this. I'm like the worst question you can ask somebody who's like, 15, 18, 20, like, what do you want to do? Like, dude, I don't know what I want to do. Like, I haven't experienced much life at all. Like, unless your parents put you on like the lawyer doctor track, like, you know, when, when from, from, you know, three years old, they're like, you're going to be a doctor, you know, um, you just, you got to figure it out. And, and I think that, that the, the better question for people to ask is what do you want your life to look like when you're 60 years old or 70 years old? Uh, if you could create the ideal dream life, what would that look like? And then you start peeling it back. You start, you know, peeling years off. So what would it, what would, how, how about if you had that at 50? How about if you could have that at 45? Like, and then, and then you start getting excited, you know, and that's really, I think the catalyst for everybody to do something big is, is, is they, they, they realize a goal that they have and the excitement that they have behind it, that they're actually willing to do whatever it takes in order to get it. And whether that's a job that doesn't necessarily look like the thing that they had in their mind, um, whether that's moving, you know, there's just like, like doing whatever it takes to achieve an outcome is, is something that I think very few people are actually willing to do. And, and I believe it's because they don't get connected enough with an ideal life that's exciting for them. And, and they get reasonable, they compromise, they settle, and then they end up, you know, they end up in a situation where they're just kind of like, okay, whatever. I wish they make sense of what they have. Uh, yeah. they, make, they make sense of the situation they have and they, and they sell themselves on how great it is when it could be so much better. Uh, the truth is they're just not willing to, to execute and do the work and, and all that. I, I love that you bring that up. And, you know, even, even our kids, we, we never really hell. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So I love that you like, that you said that, but like, even with our kids, Karen and I were not like, I mean, if one of them wanted to go to college, we would absolutely help them, but yeah. we were never like, Hey, you know, try to shape this. And it's interesting when you're saying that, cause I talk to people, this is the investing for freedom podcast. I can't tell you how many doctors, lawyers, 
you know, high net worth professionals hate their life. Yeah. And there's a ton of people that are not high net worth and hate their life too. So it's not like, but the reality is every time I hear somebody say, and, and I think it's interesting that you keyed in on this, unless somebody wants to go be a doctor because they're passionate about saving lives, unless their mom and dad set them up on this, you know, when you yeah. said that, it's like, I talk to people all the time that have literally left their law career because they were miserable and they just did what was expected of them. And so I love that you said that. On the goals and targets too, I mean, Karen and I do a lot of work with couples in the couples mastermind and all of that. And I've loved hearing and watching this with um, you and Sandy too. You guys do, I mean, you don't just say this, like you live this out. And like you said, it's not the sexy thing, but it's these regular connections and getting together and getting really clear on what you want. I love that you got, you guys do regularly, even just quarterly reconnects, right? Yeah. So we, so we, um, uh, you know, we have regular date night and like weekly. And then once a month, we, um, we have like a, a relationship day and we go and we'll get like couples massage somewhere and then go have lunch and just kind of like, we'll take out the calendar for the year. We'll just reconnect on like, Hey, how are we doing? How are you doing? How am I doing? What could I be doing to better serve you? What am I doing? That's bugging the, the, the heck out of you. You know, like, like what, what can we do to make this a little bit better? And, um, and we just continue to have that conversation ongoing and, you know, relationships are, uh, you know, uh, they, they require attention and it's, it's like an organism. And, and, and I feel when I'm like, like, I'm like, okay, we need to connect. Like it's been two weeks since we've had a date night. And I'm like, I start feeling, I start feeling different about my marriage and I'm like, what's off? Oh, we haven't been on a date night in two weeks. She had eye surgery. And then, you know, whatever happened the week before, I'm like, we're, we're just, we don't, we are missing that connection time. And, um, and so I think that's super important. And then, you know, obviously after you're married, it's probably uh, not the best time to start doing this because you want to make sure that you have alignment on your goals with your partner before you get married. <laughs> yeah. Um, that way, that way you, you, you don't end up in a situation where you, you want to build something massive and epic and, or, and she doesn't or vice versa. And, um, and, and so, you know, you just, you got to get in, you got to do the work, you got to, uh, figure out where you're going. You got to recalibrate, you know, if you're running down with your head down at the ground, you can't see where you're going, uh, based on the direction that you have and a slight little, deviation in one direction. If you don't come up and check in on it, you could end up miles the wrong way. Yeah. And I love what you were talking about earlier. It's, it's crazy that this kind of ties back in, but it, it, it's also not crazy. You know, you don't want to get to the time, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old and realize we did all of this. And by the way, I didn't even say this yet, but we're not talking to a guy who, you know, works a, a 40 hour a week job somewhere. I mean, you are like one of the OGs in the Cardona organization. So it's not like, um, you know, it's not yeah. like we're talking to somebody that's like, oh yeah, great for him. Easy for him to keep his you know, family and wife first. But I love what you were saying about perspective, because I think I genuinely believe that most people think that success and freedom and the lifestyle that we want are at odds with each other. And it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And I think, I think that that's, that's an agreement that, that you have to come to the decision of like for, for a lot of people, they're just, they give up on it. They're like, there's no way it can happen. When in reality, it's like you, you're you're probably just looking at the problem the wrong way. It's like, would you like to have that? Well, yeah, okay. Well, how could it be possible? It's not going to be possible with you as an attorney, uh, and you working eighty hours a week, and you selling your hours, your time, you know, trading dollars for time. Like, it's not going to work like that because the second you stop working, you stop stop making money. And so that's when you really start building out a life plan and it's focused less on the career that you have and, and more about like what your ideal life will cost to fund. And that for, for, for me, uh, and, and, and for other people that are hopefully fortunate enough to be in this situation, like I love the work that I do. Um, but for some people, like, they're like, I hate the job that I'm in, uh, but it's making me money that I'm working towards this outcome of achieving this this dream life. And this is just the the horse that I have to ride right now. Um, but having a plan and going, okay, like what would my ideal life cost, you know, be like, what does it cost to live that type of life 
Do I want to work in my ideal life or not? Or how do I want to choose how I'm working? And so you start making all these decisions and you're like, okay, well, then I need to make, uh, you know, 3 million bucks a year passive. Okay, well, how am I going to do that? Real estate. And then how much money do I need to invest to make 250 grand a month in passive income? And then how much money do I need to make over the next 20 years so that I can put up enough money away so that I can hit that target so that I can have the passive income target that I have? So you, you, you can really back into it in a very different way than I think a lot of people are brought up to is start with the end in mind and back into it and figure out how much money you need to make and decide what you want to do based on the opportunity that it's going to provide to help you get where you want to go. Because ultimately, where I want to go in my ideal life is more important than how I get there. For me, for some people, they're like, oh man, I got to enjoy what I'm doing every day. Well, then that's that's fine. We have a different a different definition of, of that and how to achieve that outcome. But for me, I'm like, man, if you could get me here uh, and I got to do this, I'm like, I'm game. Uh, if you can get that done in half the time, but I got to do this, I'm like, yeah, I'm game. Uh, ethically legal, like obviously all of that stuff is, is baked baked into all of this, but you know, like you just have to decide what that outcome is. And then it's like, okay, well I'm getting there. And this could be the worst advice ever. Like, but this is just how I see the world and how it makes sense to me for me to get super excited and super engaged in the work that I'm doing every day. I happen to love it. Um, but even if you don't love it, it's going to force you to be like, dude, if I just hit these targets along the way, then I'm going to get where I want to go 10 years faster than I thought. That's exciting. It's motivating. And that's the feeling that you should have when you show up to work every day. Even if you don't like the work that you do, you should get excited about the fact that what you're showing up to do that day is going to get you closer to where you want to go. And, and working for the boss and getting a check with no purpose and no outcome and no reason why you're doing that is going to leave you unfulfilled. And so I believe that it's not the jobs that people have that leave them unfulfilled. It's a lack of that target in the future so that they can define like why the work that they're doing today is important, why it's relevant and why it's exciting. Yeah, I do. I can't agree more. I was speaking to a group yesterday and you know, there's this, I, I see this so often. There's people that even own businesses that are super successful and all they want to do is get away from their business and get into the passive investing world. And people think that real estate is like this, you know, secret magic for me. This is what I really love about Grant Cardone's message because yeah. real estate can be passive. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have investment groups and people that invest with us sure. are passive investors. Mm-hmm. But you know what doesn't sell? And this is what I was talking about yesterday. You know, I I own a lot of real estate, but I've been a business guy for a long time. And most of the real estate that I own, I'm very active in. It's not passive. But yeah, so you're managing. Yeah. 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 And there's so many coaches today that are selling the dream of, you know, passive, like make money while you sleep. The only way to actually do that is to invest passively with someone else. But I talk And that's to how I do it. Yeah. That's how I invest. Like I am a 100% passive investor. I make all my money in the primary business that I have as president of the company. And I invest all of it into grants, into Cardone Capital, into his syndication. And, and so, so that's the path for me, for other people, they're like, uh, they're actively involved. They're doing fix and flips. They're buying a deal and they're managing it. Like there's different ways to do this. Um, but, but, you know, to your point that you're making right there, I am a completely passive investor, but I work my ass off in my primary job. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I think there's this idea that has been sold to so many in the last 10 or 15 years that you know, like real estate is easy. It's not easy. Um, it's just another, I, it took me a while to realize this, but if you're going to run a portfolio of real estate, it's just another business. Real estate just yeah. happens to be the product. Yeah. Just like in the sales organization that you run, the product is the the coaching and, yeah. and, and the, you know, the programs that you guys are selling. So a uh, br- brilliant point. I love that you just keep bringing it back to, you know, what are you passionate about? And if you figure out what you want in life, man, there's days that even in my own businesses, like, I don't want to go to work, but like, this is how I make my All money. The time, dude. Yeah. Like, like, like you're not supposed to, you're, you, you, you know, I think people that show up every day and love the work that they do are psychopaths. Like <laughs> there's gotta be something like wrong or like to where you're like every day, I love what I do. And, and, and so like, 
Do I have hard days? Yeah, of course. Do I have days that I don't want to come in? Yes. Do I, but you know what? The thing that I'm showing up to do is getting me the thing that I ultimately want more than anything. And so that's when you show up and you do it, even when you don't feel like it, that is the, the ultimate measure of success is when you can do the thing you don't want to do at a high level, because you know, it's going to deliver the outcome that you want, even when you don't want to do it and, and showing up and having the discipline to doing that over and over and over again, especially starting businesses, man. Like you're, you, when people get into a business and they want to start something new, like, like, like there's so much that people don't plan for. And, and there's so many roadblocks and obstacles and, and like, there's so many reasons people like thousand times a day want to just throw in the towel and quit. Like, like that's when, that's when you actually become successful. You don't become successful when the business is doing $10 million a year, you become successful in the 18 months or the two years where you're grinding your face off, trying to figure everything out. That's when you actually build the, 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 the skill sets. Uh, uh, that is when success is created, right? It just catches up with you later. Grant has this thing that he says all the time. He goes, he goes, you're underpaid uh, for most of your life. And if you're lucky, you get to the point where you're overpaid. They're, you're never paid what you're worth. You're underpaid until you're overpaid. And then, and then you're, you're, the, the, the amount of work that you put in being underpaid will determine how fast you get overpaid. That's so good. I right? saw a post a while back that really caught my attention that you said, you said showing up is 90% of success in the deal. That's kind of what I hear you like even talking about. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if you remember saying that, but it like, no, really dude. Happened. I mean, like, like I remember, I remember, um, when I was getting started and I was making cold calls, like, you know, 300 calls a day, it was brutal. Like getting hung up on cussed at, you know, just, and then showing up the next day to do it. Dude, I, for the first two years I worked with Grant, I worked six days a week. I was in California. We were in LA. I would show up to the office at 6 AM because that's when the businesses on the East coast were starting. And if I came in at nine uh, in California, like most people do, um, then I'm already missing half the day uh, for everybody on the East coast. So I'd show up at six o'clock. I'd stay there till seven o'clock at night. Uh, and then I'd work on, uh, uh, Saturdays. I'd come in from like seven to noon. And I did that every single week for two years, like figuring all of this out, making the tough calls, like, like doing all that. And, and there were times when, when, when I'm pitching big deals and I'm nervous and I'm trying, you know, and I'm just like, dude, just get there, get on the call. Like I remember calling a guy, I'm like, I'm, he's, I'm supposed to be closing this deal on this call right now. And it's, you know, this deal is going to pay me a thousand bucks a month for the next three years. Like so nervous about it. Cause I was making four grand a month at the time, you know, like I was making no money. And then I would just literally dial the phone number as quick as I could without my brain checking in, just dialing his cell phone number and just letting it ring and be like, dude, I'm, I'm showing up willing to get crushed on this call. I'm showing up willing to fail. I'm showing up willing to, to, to feel like an idiot because I say the wrong thing. Like I'm willing to do all of that. And, and I'm willing to show up and get punched because if I do it enough, I'm going to start getting better. <laughs> and, and it's almost like this, like being willing to fail thing, like just show up and just see how bad of a call it can be, yeah. <laughs> you know, like see how bad you can blow the call. And, um, because what happens more often than not is it's not as bad as you think. And then you're not as slow to respond as you think, or the day doesn't go, conversation doesn't go as bad as you think it's going to. And you end up getting a deal. Yeah. So good. Before I ask you the next question, I want you to kind of tee it up. I'll just ask you, tell us about your role in the Cardone organization and kind of give us a little backstory how you got here. Cause I, I asked you that in Mexico and I just think it's intriguing. Yeah. So, uh, I started with Grant, uh, 13 years ago. Uh, there were three employees at the time, a shipping, uh, a, a bookkeeper, uh, and, uh, somebody that was doing the website. And, um, and so I was answering the phones and selling, like it was a sales job, but there was really nobody answering the phone when it rang. So I would answer the phone too. Um, and I just started selling, you know, Grant, uh, he wasn't really around a whole lot. Like, I think I was there for a week before I even saw him. Um, and then he worked out of his office. I was in a new office that we had just opened up. Um, this is still when he was going through like, like hindsight, he's going through a big lawsuit or it's 2010. 
you know, his, his port, like the banks are coming out. Like he's got all, he's getting attacked from every angle. And um, so, but I really didn't see him around. He wasn't super like, like he would go do these seminars that other people were selling him. He had a road team, some contractors that would go in and sell these, they'd sell tickets. He'd show up, he'd do the deal. He'd fly home. Um, And so it was like, he was like, I want to, you know, my wife is uh, pregnant with Sabrina. I want to have more time at home. So we need to figure out a way to take all this seminar stuff online. So we created a new product. Anyways, it was this online program called Cardone University. Uh, and I was just calling outbound, selling it to people. Uh, and then I'm like, I started winning a bunch more. I'm like, uh, I can't continue to sell like I am and service the customers that I have. So I'm like, I need help. But I'm like, I'm not going to ask uh, uh, him to hire me an assistant. So we had a girl that was working for us uh, that ended up leaving, but she knew how to use the CRM. So I started paying her to like, Campbell admin for me. And then um, I'm like, man, it's starting to work. Like we probably need another sales guy. I'm like, Hey Grant, you know, we should, we should hire uh, somebody else. Like uh, I talk to people all the time that ask about coming to work for us. Like, you know, I'll talk to a sales guy or something like that. They'll call in. And um, I'm like, we should probably hire somebody. He's like, yeah, go ahead, do it. And I'm like, I'm the sales guy. And so next thing you know, I've got somebody hired and then, you know, I'm teaching him how to do the whole thing. And then uh, you know, then he's starting to get deals. And then now my girl can't handle all. So I'm like, Grant, we need to hire somebody to support the deal. So, so then we just started like bolting these people on. Then Sherry came in, uh, probably, you know, seven months after eight months after I started, who's the COO, uh, who runs like the whole administrative side of the business. And, um, and so it just started happening where I'm like, what's the next thing that should be happening here? And it's like, I just started doing those things and, and then we started hiring more people. We ended up moving to Florida, continue to grow. And, 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 and I'm just with always his guy and, and, and just, you know, boom, 10 years go by and then 13 years and we've got 280 employees and, you know, nine figure revenues and, you know, two offices and you know, all this stuff. Just, just like, wow. Like the result of, of all of the work is, 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 you know, it's starting to bear a lot of fruit. Partnerships come around. You know, we we built out Cardone Ventures from zero to 130 million a year in less than four years. So we'll, we'll we're knocking on the door of 300 million this year in revenue. Uh, probably I, Brandon just had a valuation for the the whole enterprise, almost three billion dollars. So um, that's sort of the Reader's Digest version of the story. Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on in the middle. Uh, you know, was smoking weed every day, you know, in the beginning, had to give that up. Um, you know, when we're moving out here, they were trying to keep it a secret from LA to Florida, the move. They wouldn't want any employees to know Grant and Sherry were trying to do this. And, and, and I knew something was going on and, uh, but I couldn't get an answer and it was killing me. And, um, Grant was like, Hey, I'm going to go, uh, you know, live in this, uh, hotel out in Miami for a little bit, you know, we're, we're selling our house. So we just, you know, we're going to go over and, and just check, you know, just live in Miami for a month or something. I'm like, I know you're not living there for a month. He had just bought a big portfolio there. I'm like, I, I know where this is going. He had this whole thing about taxes in California and how he was going to leave the state. And um, and so neither of them would give me a solid answer. So I just went and signed a lease on an apartment and said, and, and I had a call with him and I said, hey guys, I just want to let you know, I signed a lease on an apartment in Miami. Uh, I'll be out there. I don't know when you guys are, are finally coming, but I'm going to be out there. <laughs> and, um, and so that was kind of how she, that pissed Sherry off. But um it was, it, it's been a crazy ride, dude. And, um, and so today my job is, uh, you know, continue to grow the brand, bring in leads for everything, make sure the partners have everything they need to be successful in their business. Um, and we're continuing to grow ours. I, I so love it. So the reason why, I mean, obviously I wanted people to hear, you know, what your role is and, and how pivotal you've been in this, because there's always a face of an organization and I see you everywhere. Um, but when I really got to spend some time with you and see like what the inner workings are, and I'm always fascinated by that because, yeah. you know, there's always a front man. It's just kind of like that old saying, I mean, behind every amazing man is an amazing woman or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm always like curious. Okay. Like who, who are the people behind the scenes that are really getting stuff done? And so here's the question that I had for you that kind of set that up. I saw you talking a while back about imposter syndrome, and I think people would hear that whole thing like you're Jared Glant and you, you were talking about imposter syndrome and just like, you know, still showing up. 
And I hear this all the time with people, you know, wanting to get started or make the next big move. And, and I think people think that that doesn't go away. And I heard you say that the other day. And so how do you deal with that? Um, I mean, I think it's just probably like, I'm, I'm, I'm super hard on myself, you know? And, and I think that anybody who's like an achiever will, will be hard on themselves. And, um, you know, it's like, you know, it, you, you, your mind is crazy when you're not busy. Like you think about things and you're just like, dude, how is this even possible? How am I here? Like there's, there's more qualified people to do this job than me, but, but, but then on the same token, it's like, okay, but they're not. And why it's because, you know, I understand everything about the business. Me and Grant are, you know, in, in, in aside from just working together, like he's one of my best friends, uh, you know? So like, we're, we're doing this amazing thing together. The stats are there, you know, like, and by stats, it's like the proof, like, like, what is the, what is the, what is the proof of your work? Well, the proof is the statistics. The proof is what you've been able to accomplish. The proof is, uh, every year, 13 years, year over year, company growth, never gone down one year ever. So it's like all of those things come together and it's like, okay, dude, like get your head out of the mud, man. Yeah. So good. <laughs> what, I, so we're, I've been, I've been waiting like for a couple of days to ask you this, really been thinking about it. We're in a really transitional time right now. And I, I'm curious what you guys are paying attention to what, and maybe it's just nothing. Maybe it's business as usual. And we just need to stop listening to all the garbage, but what are you guys really focused on right now? What are you paying attention to? What do you think we need to be paying attention to? Yeah. I mean, um, this, this is, um, I, I won't really consider COVID. I know COVID was very disruptive, um, but it was disruptive because they started shutting businesses down, like closing businesses, locking people in their house. Like, like, I don't think that's anything you can really prepare for. Despite all that, you kind of, you know, you got to figure out a way to make it work always. Um, but for me coming in, working with Grant in 2010 and uh, on the back end of, you know, the recession, financial markets collapse, housing markets, like all that stuff. Like, like I got to uh, be in this position when things were really bad. And, um, you know, Grant used to always say something back then that just kind of sticks with me. It's just like, um, if there's a recession going on, I'm choosing not to participate in it. Mm. Um, and so it's just like, for us, it's kind of business as usual, you know, like, the way that the customers are making decisions changes. And so your, your, your messaging has to, you know, be, be sensitive to that. Like maybe they're, they're in, instead of interested in growth, they're more interested in not losing, um, you know, in, instead of uh, hiring and scaling, they're looking to maximize profit, you know? So, so there's always like, um, you know, some way to play what's happening and under and do it with the understanding of, of what the customer is, 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 the way the customer's talking about the problem that they're having. Um, but for us, like, we're not talking about, you know, recession. We're not talking about layoffs. Uh, you know, obviously on the real estate side with, with uh, the market, the way that it is, it makes it challenging. It's harder to find deals. Um, it's harder to, you know, to, to, to pencil deals when prices haven't adjusted. So, you know, there, that, that, that has some complexity built into it, but you know, the, you know, the one thing that we we told people going into COVID was, guys, you just got to understand right now that the expectation for you is to work twice as hard as you were before, and you're going to get the same result. And so I just want you to have the right expectation going into this, that the way you were working before won't work. What you have to come in knowing is that you're going to have to work twice as hard to get the same result that you were getting three months ago. And if you can't accept that, then you're going to have problems. And, and then we told them, as long as your activity remains over this point, regardless of your production, you will not be fired or terminated. Mm. But when your activity drops, uh, you're out. Yeah. Make sure your activity is there. And so that's the thing people need to, to think about. Just make sure the activity is there. Like, make sure that you're, 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 you're swinging as much as you can. Give yourself as many at-bats as possible. Like, just keep showing up and making the call and doing the work and knowing that if your business is in an industry that is going to be affected or that has been affected or that's ongoing, whatever, 
that you just got to show up and work harder because there are so many people that are just going to give up. They're going to take a break. They're going to say, hey, look, I'm going to live with losing 70% over the next 24 months just until things recover or 18 months. But, but that's dangerous because mm-hmm. what happens is it takes those people a while to, to build back up. And, and what we wanted to have happen was because we knew COVID would end. It was like, like, guys, look, if you can build in the discipline to, to work like this, then there's going to be a time for probably six months where everybody's knocking the cobwebs off, trying to get back up on the horse and get back to work. And you're going to be running at full speed. Yeah. And so we're literally going to like, like market share is going to fall in our lap. Yeah. And so you just have to, there's these, just these, you know, throughout all 13 years, there's been different moments where you just have to tell yourself a different story in the, in your, in your head about, about the play you need to run. Yeah. It's so good, man. And you know, when I hear that too, and we were talking off camera before we got started, you're like, dude, there's some things going on. Like everybody's talking about recession and slowing down. I was having a conversation with a guy yesterday. Who's a big up at, I won't say what company, but it's a tech company. Yeah. Um, and they're blowing up and he's like, yeah, it's crazy because three months ago, we laid off 1200 people, but right now we're hiring 2,400. And I was like, he's like, you know, from, from the, you know, you're listening to everybody on the outside and they're like, everything's negative, but it's like when they lay off 5% of their workforce, they're getting their, and by the way, anybody that's in that 5%, we feel sorry for, and they're, yeah. they're getting impacted. But like you said, it's probably the people that are not putting in the work. They're not getting things done. So when they lay off 1200 and they hire 2400 a few months later, it's like the calling of the herd. And so there, here's the, When I see guys like you, so I'm a wartime leader. It took me a while to figure this out. I actually break things when things are good because I'm like, you know, when things are good, I'm like, we got to fix things. And maybe, yeah, yeah, we got something can happen better. We're doing something. (laughs) But, you know, I've realized like I'm a wartime leader and I've realized that, you know, the one thing that I could do better is what you're talking about staying more engaged in the process when things are good, because when things are broken, I'm coming in and I'm fixing. In in 2007, when I had my first business, everybody was retreating. All of my competitors were cutting back marketing. They were cutting back spending. I was hiring. And the way that I see this, when I think about wartime leader, when people are retreating, dude, that is the best time to advance. Like it just makes practical sense. Well, every action you take has double the effect. Mm Mm-hmm. Because while you're advancing forward, you're not staying still while everybody's retreating. You're moving forward. Yeah. So your, 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 your actions are yielding double the result. Yeah. And that's why I love watching, like, I mean, just even the languaging, I've learned so much by watching you, watching Grant, because it's not just, it isn't just for social media, obviously. I think sometimes people think that, but the reality is, is like when you look at a wartime leader that also fixes those things that I said, I'm not that great at, you guys are good in peacetime but you guys are great in wartime. And that's one of the things from the outside looking in, you know, even like I said, before we started recording, you're like, dude, things are insane here. What are, dude, I, without giving away, like, what are you guys doing? Bro, like what we're, uh, what we're working on uh, through Cardone Ventures, uh, like this is, this is the ultimate, like, like we have a, 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 an, a business education brand, you know, and a real estate portfolio. And obviously like, uh, you know, the grants making a bunch of money in, in, in real estate. A lot of people make money in real estate. Very few people make the kind of money we're making in an education business. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think we're, I know that we are in the process of doing what almost nobody has done before with an education brand online. And we're going to combine education, social and audience with private equity and we're going to build a public company that's going to be, have a $10 billion uh, market cap. And, and then people are going to be like, Oh my God, how did that happen? That this, this, this influencer, uh, you know, built this brand. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're selling deals to private equity and publicly traded company. And so we've got a 10 X law that's uh, we're working on, um, uh, we have a financial services company that we're going to launch insurance. Um, we're, we're, we're building out a platform for dental, for Cairo, for HVAC, uh, for roofing, uh, for solar. Uh, we're building up all the, we're building out all these verticals and we're, we're basically using our reach to go out and, 
find businesses that are like-minded, that grab a piece of content, it works. They sign up for our programs, they get closer to us. We learn more about them. And, and ultimately we bring them into uh, one, of these, one of these new business units and blow them up, scale them and sell them off and, and you know, put the owners in a position where they'll be able to sell 10% of their business for what they could have sold 100% of it for. And, so, and so I think that's going to be a, 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 a big deal. And, and then there's some other like, like really fringy, wild things that could be like, uh, you know, just first time movers, first time, you know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of really interesting things coming. I can't say a lot about that yet, but yeah. um, super excited, man, you know, like, yeah. especially to see all the work start coming together. And, and I give, you know, obviously Grant uh, is a visionary and the, the think like being able to think like this guy does and then being around people that, that, that get to see it. Like, I think Grant is probably one of the most misunderstood people, uh, based on what you would see from him on social media. And almost, I won't say almost everybody, cause there are a lot of people that immediately, uh, they resonate with him, but there's a lot of people that don't like him immediately. Mm. And, and one of the most common things that we hear after people come to our office, somebody drags them along, you know, they get worn down over time. They're just like, man, I had no idea. I have you so wrong. Mm. And, and, and I think that, that, um, that, that to see people coming through the ecosystem now, I mean, like, you know, there's a whole, you know, group of people that anybody that's talking about investing, you probably know this, anybody who's talking about, you know, grow your business and make more money. You immediately with a certain group of people, probably the people that don't educate themselves, you immediately end up in this like, oh, you're a scammer. It's a fraud. Mm. You know, it, your, your shit doesn't work, whatever. But it gets to the point where it's so big that it's like, you can't, you can't deny that anymore. And right. so, um, so, you know, like, it's just been really cool to see how, what Grant has built has attracted uh, partners like Brandon uh, who bring in this whole new dynamic to the business uh, that really is going to allow us to monetize what we've created in a very significant way. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, here in that whole evolution, appreciate you sharing all of that along the way. I'm curious, there's so many, even, you know, older, not, not even just age-wise, but older entrepreneurs that have been in business for 20, 30 years. Um, that have kind of missed the boat on this. There's still so many people that haven't leveraged uh, what you guys have. Uh, all the time. So I, yeah, I'm just curious, like how has social media, how has it changed things for you guys? Everything. And yeah. Social media is everything. Like, would we be where we're at today without social media? No freaking way. L let me just tell you, social media is why Brandon Dawson is our partner. Because Natalie followed, started following Elena. Social media, the brand that we built, 100% responsible for creating Cardone Capital, raising a, over a billion dollars from non-institutional everyday investors. Wow. It's because of the social media. Uh, the business we have today, nine figures, 100% because of social media. We built it to 10 million a year without it. But everything above that, was because the brand started getting hot. Wow. So I'll just say that and, and in these rooms, like we run, a, we have a classroom in our office here in Miami. Uh, we have a classroom. We run events out in uh, Scottsdale in our offices out there. Um, every room, like you cannot emphasize enough to people how significant social media will be for their business. Most people still aren't taking it seriously because either they just, it's not for them. They're not committed enough. They don't have a goal big enough that they're willing to do whatever it takes. Like we talked about earlier. Um, uh, and, 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 and so they, they just, they're, or they think it's too late. And so they end up just not doing anything and not changing anything. And it's just like the biggest, the biggest flunk you could have as a business owner is just continuing to ignore social. I don't do, I don't do a good enough job of, being active on social media. I hate it actually. Um, like I hate posting stuff. Like I don't, I don't feel the need to, to post anything about my life. Like I don't need acknowledgement from people. Like I don't like, I, I don't post something and be like, Oh man, like I got all these people that liked it. It makes me feel good. Like 
the most important people to me are the people that live inside the house uh, that I go home to every night. Um, having said that, I, 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 maybe the excuse I'm telling myself is because I'm a Grant is the promoter. He's the guy. But 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 um, I should be investing in my brand more than I am right now. I should be investing into that. And so should every business owner. And if you're having the conversation where you're like, oh man, I've got too much going on, then who's, who is it going to be? You know, like somebody needs to be using this. Somebody needs to be connecting with people. Somebody needs to be that. And I would recommend it be the owner of the business yeah. because you're the only one that's married to the business. Like, yeah. like I had a guy in here that, that um, he was, he had a car dealer, got a car dealership and all of his marketing, he had a marketing guy is the face. So now this guy that's not even uh, uh, connected to the business is all over all of this guy's promo, all over all of his YouTube videos. And the guy quit to go start his own dealership. And I'm wow. like, so what do you have to do now? He's like, I got to get rid of every video with this guy. Wow. So, so it's like, like, it's so important. And, and um, I can't emphasize that enough. And I think, you know, probably 90% of companies are, are under uh, valuing, under utilizing social media and the power that it has. Because they're expecting something quick. It's not like you're expecting an ROI from something that takes years. Like I have this graph that I show in one of our marketing workshops that that basically shows the Google trends uh, of Grant Cardone over the last 13 years. And it's like it's like flat at the beginning, little, you know, little blips. And then at the end, it just goes, it's like Warren Buffett's wealth graph, if you've ever seen that. Yeah. You know, like, and you're like, what was going on over here? Um and uh, I refer to this time as like the valley of the shadow of death from 2010 to 2014, where it was just like not a lot going on, but we were creating so much content. We were leaning in so hard and it just wasn't there yet. And, um, and, and, but, but I think that it's a result of all of that, you know, you reap what you sow, right? So it's the result of all of that work that ended up catching up with us. We were underpaid until yeah. we were overpaid. So it's like that, that, it, that forward investment is the thing that people miss. It's the same way in life. It's the same way with diet and exercise. Anything that is worth having does not come instantly. It comes over time. And so people have to start looking at social media as a department, a mandatory department in their company, rather than this thing that, oh, that's for the young kids. It's as important as accounting. Is It's, it's as important as sales is fulfillment, you know, it's, it's everything. It just needs to be something you do. Um, and you're either going to do it or you're going to, you know, struggle big time. I had, a, I had a guy just as an example, I don't want to beat on the drum too long because no, I, I love it. I love it. it right now, but, but I had a, 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 again, another marketing room. And, um, there was this guy that was in the room. I said, who's been in the room the longest, this guy raised his hand, really proud. How long you been in business? I've been in business for 55 years. And, uh, you know, 52 years or whatever. And, um, I'm like, okay, great. What do you do? He's like, I'm a contractor. I'm like, he was, and he was from the South. That's why I'm accusing using the accent, you know? Um, and I'm like, okay, great. So what, what, what'd you guys do in business last year? He goes, we did $5 million last year. I'm like, okay, great. Um, and, and I, I had kind of set this up because I knew who was in the room and there was this kid sitting in the front row and I said, Hey, how old are you? He goes, um, uh, I'll be 19 in two months. And I said, and what kind of business are you? And he's like, I'm a contractor. I said, what will you guys do in business this year? $25 million. <laughs> and I said, guys, uh, who has more experience? Who, who has more connections? Who has seen more? Who has made more mistakes? Who do you think probably has the job, the ability to do a better job? And everybody said the guy for 50 years. And I said, what's the difference between the two? This kid is using TikTok and Instagram and Facebook to promote the work that he's doing. He's promoting his business. And it is the thing that is the difference between this and that. So it's not the most experienced, it's the most known. And we have this saying, best product never beats best known. Mm. And, and so people have to get known and they have to get out there and they have to promote themselves as uncomfortable as it may be for some people. Like, like you just got to get out there and social media is the best way to do that. You know, the rules I'm just, as I'm hearing that, like the rules have completely changed. And we talk about this in money all the time, the rules of money have changed. And there's like people that are playing by an old rule book. And that's what I hear when you're saying like the rules have changed. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No doubt. Um, 
And I like, dude, look, you don't have to look, you know, probably, hopefully most of the people listening to this are like, yeah, I know social media is a lot. I'm on it a lot. You know, I'm listening to podcasts. Just the fact that somebody's consuming digital content says that they're somewhat connected to digital. Um, but it's, it's, it's no longer an option, you know? And, and, and it's just the biggest missed opportunity of your life. If you continue to ignore it, it's not too late. Most people are terrible at it. Most people think most people are terrible at marketing. Most people are even worse at marketing on social media. Good. And, and, and for some reason, people think that it's too late, that they're not good enough. Like when all you have to do is show up, just show up and post something once a day, do it for 30 days and see what happens. Like, like you don't have to do a lot. It's the bar is so low, um, but you just have to show up. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I want to be cognizant of your time, man. But you know, this is crazy because I rarely say this, but other than like your training and coaching at Cardone, you're not actually selling anything. You don't care if like people go follow you on Instagram or whatever, but where can people find you if uh, they wanted to? Just just Jared Glant on Instagram. That's I'm, I'm there the most. Um you know, just I'm Jared Glant most places. So yeah. And any, any, any if they want to find me, they can go there. <laughs> yeah. And you know, just quickly, because I don't know how many people may or may not know this, but I mean, even at Cardone, your guys' Cardone you and all of that stuff is I, I actually have a, a a mutual, well, he's a friend of mine and and a client of yours, uh Mike Escorza. So shout out to Mike. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mike, yeah. You guys have like changed his like whole world, man. Like I've known this kid for probably three, maybe four years now. Uh -huh. And seeing Mikey today after going through, you know, all of your training and being a representative of Cardone, like whole different, whole well, different. Well, so what stuff. happened, what happened was he was selling boats at a boat dealership and got on Cardone university and started crushing it and started doing better. Got like the whole adopted the whole mindset like started going all in, was investing in his self, personal development, coming to programs, courses. And then he ended up signing up for our, uh, our 10X business coach program, uh, where, where we actually give people the ability, a license to take all of our material and go out and teach it and make a business out of it. So it's like, you know, the number one problem that most coaches have is they can't get clients because they don't have any credibility and they don't have a whole lot of content. And so what we did is we're like, hey, we'll just solve that problem. We'll give them all of our content. We'll let them ride on the credibility of our name. And then they can go out and build a business and kind of co-brand with the Grant Cardone name and business uh, rather than going out and trying to be their own person. And so he came in, went through, has developed his, his, his pitch is, you know, he's, he's going after he's now he's selling training to boat dealerships and, yeah. and helping them implement these things and, and, and bring on a lot of clients um, you know, uh, he, he stands out as, is somebody, you know, we have a, we have a lot of clients. So, um, uh, but he's one guy that I definitely know for sure, because he used to reach out to me all the time when he was just a sales guy. And, uh, and, and, and I remember, uh, having tech, you know, conversations over Instagram with him years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like there's a lot of ways for people to get in with us. Our 10 X business coach, 10 X business coach.com is a place where if people want to partner with us and become a coach. We have coaches now that we actually we actually have fulfill clients for us, fulfill coaching for us for our clients. So we actually go out and sell it, and they go through a certification process, and we just give them a client and pay them to do the coaching. Um, we have our Cardone University product, uh, CardoneUniversity.com, for business owners uh, who want to grow their sales and get their teams engaged. And then we have, you know. 10x 360. If you want to change the way your business operates, and and you know we can platform a business and basically build out a a, a one, three, and five year business plan for them. Uh, wow. Our health, our health business is just exploding. 10x health. So like you know, there's just there's a lot of ways for people to get in. I'm here to pitch all of it actually, because yeah. <laughs> um, because uh, all these things are are, are remarkable companies that have great products and great people attached and, and the, the people in the companies are, you know, we, we're all aligned with how we think and how we operate. It's like, you know, if you can, if you think that it'd be great to have a, 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 a business full of people that were like, man, I want to deliver to the customer. I want to uh, deliver at home to my family. Like I want to show up and deliver for my boss and the owner of the company. Like all of our, all of our employees, uh, uh, are, are, uh, 
you know, they're jumping onto that bandwagon when they work here. And they do it because of all the resources that we have that we give them access to, uh, to get on board with that. And so I would just recommend anybody out there, if you own a business and, and you want to figure out what you can do to, to improve your culture, improve your performance, grow faster, just get connected with us on something, come to an event, you know, come to a boot camp like the, uh, you'll get you'll get a taste of 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 what it's like, and um, it's just way better like this. It's way better with people bought in, smiling, showing up. You know, good culture. You know, no gossip, no BS. You know, like it's just better like that. Makes it more fun. I love plus that. You make, plus, you make more money. <laughs> yeah, so good, man. Well, I can't thank you enough for you know coming in and and speaking with the audience, and again, just so appreciative of who you are and what you guys have built. It's a uh, it's, it's more, it's, it's better this way. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to hang out with you again, man. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Uh, we got to make that happen. So, uh, yeah, let's figure it out for sure. Cheers. It's great to be here, man. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. Of course. That was great. Yeah. yeah I got, uh, when you, when you grab Sandy, you'll have to twist her arm, but, um, you guys should come speak to our couples mastermind at some point. Yeah. That'd be awesome. We'd love to, you know, usually it's one or the other that will speak and won't, but like, I mean, you guys both do. So that, that'd be great. Yeah. I'd love to just let, let me hit me up with text and let me, give me some dates. Yeah. I'll send you a Calendly link. I mean, it's, uh, there's two spots a month for you can, you can pick out like all the way through December. So perfect. 